Hi everyone, I'm Sabine, and welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to be doing my second sketchbook tour from sketchbooks that I finished in my sketchbook challenge, and it's going to be of this Canson sampler right here. Hello everyone, and welcome back. This is my second sketchbook tour. Since I started my sketchbook challenge, I have finished a number of sketchbooks and today we are going to be looking at this one. It is a paper sampler from Canson. This is what the cover looks like. I actually tried to find this on the internet and I can't. It has a price on the back, but they're just like samples that I guess Canson represented this handout and I was lucky enough to get one. This is not a very long sketchbook. It's 36 pages or at least 36 pages of actual paper that I can draw on. There's a bunch of stuff in the middle. And I thought this would be kind of a fun sketchbook to do because it has suggestions in it for the different mediums that you can use on the different papers. And if you're wondering why this page I have on the front cover right now, it's because I had to cut it out of the book, unfortunately. Uh, you'll see when we get to the marker paper why I had to cut it out. I was afraid that this drawing was going to get ruined, and it's one of my favorite things from it, honestly. So, yeah, let's let's start off on a good note. I will say, though, that I initially did not want to do a sketchbook tour of this sketchbook. When I first started out doing it, I had this in it, which was nice, but then... I started doing a bunch of experiments and they did not turn out. But then I did do more work in it and I did have some things that I really liked. So I thought, you know what, I do need to show this sketchbook because people do need to see a sketchbook that has nice things in it as well as terrible things in it that didn't work out. Because that's what sketchbooks are for and that's what they're like in real life. So as we're going through, I'll explain what I like and what I don't like. And let's get started with this sketchbook. This is kind of what the sketchbook looks like on the inside. It has a thing that says this is what the paper is and then when you flip it over this is the paper and it has suggestions in it for various medium that you can use. And I thought that was really cool. Like <laughs> I'm going to take this more as an experiment to use things that I don't normally use. This is the sketch paper. It's quite thin. I would prefer a much heavier paper to draw on so I didn't really work too hard on these drawings. Uh, the first one I decided to do was in pen. The next thing I did was a crow, and this is in charcoal. And this is my graphite piece. I drew a dragon, and yeah. Oh, I used to draw dragons all the time, like when I was in high school and a lot younger. And when I drew this, I just thought, oh, this did not work out the way I wanted you to work out. Why? Why? Okay. Moving on to the drawing paper, I did some colored pencil and this is, I think it's mostly Prismacolor, maybe with a little bit of Derwent mixed in and it's just a blue jay and I really did like the way this turned out. There's a few nitpicky things. If you're looking at this, you're probably like, oh, Sabine, what's wrong with it? But for me, like it was just like a few things kind of in his face and his throat. But overall, I did like this. It's probably one of the better pieces to come out of this sketchbook. So going on with my bird theme, I did this Oriole and this is pastel and charcoal. And yeah, I don't know, something went wrong in the anatomy of this bird and it just, you know, the colors are nice, but something in this kind of drove me crazy. I was not, I was not having a good day when I did this because I did that and then I did this cute little hermit thrush. And again, the anatomy was just off. Uh, this is this is in Conte, uh, Conte pencil that I have. I feel like these could have been good drawings, but just something was a little bit off about the anatomy, and I was not happy with them. This is the white drawing paper, and this is the one page in the sketchbook that I had drawn on previously that I decided I was not going to touch. So I, I thought, you know what, I love this sort of geometric floral thing that I was doing. I wish I had filled out the entire page. This one had some flowers along the bottom, actually these ones. And this one I did finish. So 
I, I felt like that was a good trade-off. This is the finished piece. I, I went in, I did it. This one, I decided I was going to leave it alone. I figured I'll, I'll let that bit of the past stay in the past and I'll just let it stay as it is. So this is drawing paper and in the vein of experimenting, I decided I'm let's see what alcohol-based marker looks like on this paper and God, it looks terrible. You can see how blotchy it is. So I like the concept. The execution is an utter fail because I used alcohol-based marker on paper that I shouldn't have, but I wanted to see how it turned out. And now I know. With this, I went with something where I couldn't screw up the paper. This is a red Verithin pencil, and I absolutely love using these pencils. They're a color pencil that has a really super hard lead, and that's because they're meant not for drawing but for writing. And for some reason, I love these pencils. I got them for my parents. We kind of had an open art drawer policy when I was a kid. Like if I wanted to borrow some of my mom's art supplies or office supplies or whatever, I could I could do that. These colored pencils that I have, they're from like the 70s or 80s and they're really super old and I don't think they make them anymore, but I absolutely love them. And that's all that I'm going to ramble on for the Verithins for now. So now we're into the pastel paper. And this, as you can see, is very rough on one side and smooth on the other side. For some reason, I hate the texture side. If you're going for a certain texture with it, then great. This could be perfect for, for something like that. But I, I hate this textured business going on here. But in the spirit of experimentation, I thought, you know what? I really do need to draw on the rough side at least once. So I drew this horse in charcoal and I still wasn't convinced about drawing on the rough side of the paper. Going back to using markers where they're not really supposed to be used. I have done this before where I do kind of like a mixed media thing. I'll use markers as the base and you can kind of see, I think it took better to this paper than the drawing paper. It's still kind of blotchy in some areas, but it does work. And then you can use like pastels over top. I'm not totally displeased with how this turned out, but the experience of using marker on this paper was not very pleasant. Here's uh, another Conte pencil. This is just drawing from life, a tree in my backyard. I tried to film myself drawing this outside and it really didn't work. I had to think, what can I draw on blue paper? And I thought, oh, blue flowers? Cornflowers, yeah, cornflowers are blue. All right, let's draw some cornflowers. This is done in pastel. It's okay. It's nah, not that great. <laughs> This is actually one of my favorite pieces from the sketchbook. I love the way this turned out. I have posted this on social media already because I just fell in love with it. This was the point where I felt like, yes, I have, I understand gouache now. <laughs> if you see my other sketchbook tour and throughout the rest of this sketchbook, you will see more gouache as we get to the thicker papers near the end. And you will see some that are just failed experiments. So when I did this, I thought, yes, this worked out the way I wanted it to work out. So I was really happy just because of that. So these are ink washes. And this was kind of going back to, um, I wanted to use some ink for Inktober. So I thought, yeah, let's, let's play around with ink and see what we can get. You know, this is white ink, obviously. And I did that on the blue paper to see what it looked like on colored paper. And then just painting, I went over these several times with greens and blues that I have, and it, I kind of like how it turned out. I enjoyed the process. I learned a lot about ink in the process, kind of about how to layer it and how it stays on the paper. So this was a good experiment. It's nothing fancy, but I like it. This is something that I am actually really happy with. This is a mage character of mine. If you have no idea what I'm talking about. Don't worry about it. This is my character from a role-playing game. This is kind of his avatar in the background. He's Japanese, so his avatar is like a fox spirit. I was really happy with how this turned out, even though the markers died on me halfway through the process. As you can see, I was testing marker on this paper. Some of the marker worked really nicely, and some of them just started to run out. But I kind of like the effect. 
I was not disappointed with it at all. I liked how it turned out. Here we have some Drawloween. I hope I'm not getting too far ahead of myself. It's day eight, so you guys have probably seen this one by now. Uh, the illustration paper was, it was quite nice to work on. It's a little bit thicker, so... And this is gouache. <laughs> this is me experimenting with my gouache, and this is just the straight ultramarine blue that I have. I don't think I had actually applied it straight to the paper. I had been using it to mix other colors at this point. I tried just seeing what it was like plain on the paper. The same thing with the yellow. And this is what I got. Okay, the Bristol board. This stuff had like a really weird coating on it or something, which I will get to. This is Drawloween and this is water-based marker. I believe they're Tombow pens I was using. And yeah, it, it actually turned out pretty nice. I really had no idea what to do for the haunted hard drive. So I just drew a ghost with a computer because that was all I could come up with. But I'm not displeased with how it turned out. Okay, so this is marker on the Bristol and this worked out really nicely. The marker blended. It kind of looks blotchy here because some of my markers are old and crappy, but you know, the face you can see is nicely blended and I put some colored pencils on top. So it, it turned out really nice. This is one of my better pieces in this book. Something I'm actually happy with how it looks. So this is kind of where I ran into problems with this weird texture on this paper. Now I don't know if you can quite see this, but like this is gouache and there were places where it just, it peeled right off of the paper. When I put down the first layers, they didn't want to stick to the paper. It was a really bizarre experience. And it's too bad because I like this painting. I liked where it was going. I liked how it was turning out. This is a Fox character I've been working on for a little while now. I've, I've done some other concept sketches of her. So this was me trying to develop that idea. And I wish I could have taken it further, but I just kept painting on this and it just wasn't taking the gouache the way I wanted to. So I said, okay, I'm going to cut my losses and end it here because I don't think this is working and I think I'm just going to waste my paint if I keep keep working with it. So I didn't get to finish it and I'm kind of disappointed with that. The marker paper. That's what my garden drawing was on and it's marker paper. You should be able to use markers on marker paper, right? Let's start with the water-based markers, my, my Tombow pens. Now I don't know if you can quite see it because it has flattened out since. But when this paper got wet, it just got really, really ripply. Like it warped like crazy. And I was, I was actually afraid that it was going to warp the paper that was in front of it, which was the garden drawing. So I ripped it out of the sketchbook. Okay, so uh, water-based markers are a big no-no uh, for the marker paper. How do alcohol-based markers fare on the marker paper? Yeah. <laughs> are you looking at this and going, what the hell is this? I tried drawing something really basic, really simple. I was like, I'm just gonna draw an apple and try and like blend out the colors in the apple. There's zero blending going on. And believe me, I tried. I have no, no idea why this paper does not blend at all. Okay, like let's go back to the Bristol paper for a second. Like there's, there's two different colors here in this face. Can you even tell? No, because it blended. This? Oh my god. I, oh. And, you know, I thought, am I crazy? Like, is this... Did I do something wrong? Is this not working? I have no idea. And it's funny because the next stuff is vellum. <laughs> so I kind of tried again. Oh, hang on. I have to get, like, a piece of paper. This is alcohol-based marker on vellum. And, yeah, it's totally weird. But, like, even here you could see how it sits on top of the paper. And I was able to use the same colors to blend out this apple and this is water-based marker and it you know it kind of worked fine it was so weird that all, all these other papers took marker and the marker paper did not then i thought let's try some gouache on vellum because going with the theme of experimentation as you can tell and it actually worked okay for the flowers but once i got into the washes so putting water on the vellum did not work very well and that was okay this was an experiment. I really wasn't sure what to draw on the vellum anyway. 
it's really good for ink and graphite, but I, I was I wanted to paint. <laughs> I did do some graphite on the vellum, and as you can see, it looks okay. It looks it looks perfectly fine. It's a good surface to draw on with pencil. It's just see-through, <laughs> so I, I feel like vellum has special uses, and unless you really want it for one of those special uses, like there's kind of no purpose to it. I don't know why it was included in this book, but I had to find things to put on the vellum. <laughs> the next paper is black paper, their Ingress paper. As you can see, I started off with some white pastel. I thought, yeah, this is gonna be good, a good use for this paper. And I don't know if you could quite see this, but there's kind of this white blotchiness around the rabbit, and that's from the fixative. I thought the fixative would be clear, and it, it works totally fine on white or cream colored paper, but as soon as you use it on a dark paper or a colored paper, you do see little dots, and that's just something to keep in mind, little warning about fixative. If you're going to use it, it don't work so well on dark paper. Here I am using white ink on Ingress. I did not have an easy time coming up with ideas for black paper. This is Drawloween again, but this is kind of far in the future, and this is what graphite looks like on the black Ingress, and also I did do a test with the fixative. I think you can see it much better here. This was graphite, and I thought, oh, I want to put some fixative on it so it doesn't smudge because it's hard enough to see as it is, but yeah, you can kind of you can kind of see it. So that's sort of a neat effect for black paper, but I don't know. If I didn't have it specifically in this book, I really probably wouldn't have tried it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at the watercolor paper. Yes, I get to paint stuff. Oh, I was so happy that there was watercolor paper in this because I want to paint more. And yeah, I could fill up my sketchbooks while painting, which is really, really nice. Okay, so I did this little galaxy painting and it was kind of an experiment for me. This was actually the second galaxy painting I did. I kind of looked up some tutorials online because the first one, you'll see when we get to the mixed media paper, it it did not turn out the way I wanted. This turned out much nicer. Testing ink on watercolor paper. These are my ink rabbits and you will have seen this in one of my videos. It's my sketchbook challenge follow-up where I talk about the pros and cons of doing a challenge. You get to see me actually use the ink washes to paint in these rabbits. Painting with ink is very different from painting with anything else that I've ever painted with because it's very permanent. Uh, so that was interesting. If, if you're curious about ink washes, then watch that video because it's super interesting. It was a neat experiment for me. This is gouache. And I was trying to lay down some really light washes. I actually kind of like how the water looks. And then I tried to add a windsurfer because I was learning to windsurf this summer and it was on my brain. And I didn't use any reference, which was a bad idea. <laughs> and I just produced this piece of garbage. I, I actually tried starting to fix it and I, I felt like every time I tried to fix it, I made it worse. So I gave up on it. I said, no, it is not worth my time and effort to try and fix this. I honestly thought about painting over it, but then I had that thought that Maybe this is a good thing to show people because it shows that thought process where things don't work out. And you know, this was definitely me learning a medium. And I think you can tell, you can tell I'm trying, I'm trying. And it's just not happening. So I hate this page so much. Consider yourselves lucky you get to see it. Mixed media paper. Now, I'm not really a fan. I'd rather use watercolor paper for painting. I don't, I don't know why. I think I just have had bad experiences with mixed media paper and you'll see why. Let's look at my first galaxy painting. What is this garbage, Sabine? I don't know. I did this after I did my other sky painting in my red travelogue sketchbook, which you could see in my video for ideas for first pages. And that turned out really nice. It was, it was beautiful. I had this sort of magenta color on the bottom and, uh, you know, moving up into blue and indigo at the top. And so I tried to recreate that here and, oh, it just, I want to blame the paper, but I have to blame myself too, because I really, 
had no idea what I was doing. I did try to glaze over this to fix it. It was not working. Oh, I hate looking at it because it just reminds me of failure. <laughs> I tried to make something and I tried to fix it and it still didn't work. This was gouache on mixed media paper and this, this is very, very light. Like I used a lot of water. Again, I was testing the paper because I like to paint with a lot of water. I'm used to watercolor. But you can see in the black, like you can see the backgrounds, right? So the paper is not super absorbent. It probably would be just fine if I just used like straight layers of gouache and didn't go for washes or anything like that. It probably would have been fine. It's not, it's not super bad. Like the paper didn't warp horribly, but it's also not super great. I don't hate how this turned out though. I actually think it's kind of cute and I kind of like it, but <laughs> I just wish it was on different paper. So this is the last drawing in this book and it is ink actually on mixed media paper. I had really bright colors and I thought, oh, well, the parrot would be a perfect thing to paint with these vibrant colors. So it, it actually worked out pretty well. I'm fairly pleased with how this turned out. Considering that I had no clue what I was doing with ink and I learned a lot by doing this. I learned a lot about gouache and ink in this sketchbook. So even though some of the pages look like disasters, some of them look great. And I also learned a ton about different kinds of papers and which ones are suitable for which media because I ended up pushing the envelope on this. I tested some things that I knew wouldn't necessarily work out. And sometimes it actually worked out okay. But most of the time, yeah, it, it just, it would have been better to use a different paper. But honestly, now that I have gone through this sketchbook with you, I think I'm happier with it now than I was when I finished it. When I finished it, I thought, oh, this, this isn't what I wanted it to be. You know, I wish I had done more. I wish I had maybe used the backs of some of the pages. Uh, that was something I had decided ahead of time that I was only going to use one side of the paper, especially because some of the paper's thinner. Looking at it now, I feel much better about that decision and I'm glad that things worked out the way that they worked out. I hope you like this sketchbook tour. It's a little bit short of a book, but I think I have rambled on much longer than needed. So let's wrap things up by saying that if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up by hitting the like button. Please subscribe for more art videos. I put new videos out every Friday and we're gonna be doing an art challenge next, I believe. So lots of cool stuff coming up. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for all your support during this crazy sketchbook challenge that I'm doing. I really appreciate it. So if you have anything nice to say or any nice encouragement, please feel free to put it in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.